Hey Jack, this is Professor Oz coming to you from Taos, New Mexico. I'm at Anasazi Ruins here, outside of Taos. Um, this is kind of a combination uh, Bigfoot, but mainly paranormal. Right now you can see on my melmeter we're getting 0.3, which on the ghost shows I get pretty darn excited about, Jack. And uh, what this means right now, if you could look behind, I want to step back for a minute, you can see that uh, we're looking at Anastasi ruin here. A little bit about the Anastasi. They were here, they suddenly appeared about 3,000 years ago in this area, and at 1300 mysteriously disappeared, burned their dwellings. We don't know anything about them. Some people actually think they were from another planet, sent by aliens to populate and were taken away. Who knows? I don't want to sound like a crackpot once again. There are no electrical wires anywhere, no underground wires. We're in the middle of nowhere, and we're getting a 0.3 through the walk and various places we've gone has gone up to 2.9 and when we got closer to the ruins oh see we're getting a point four right now so we're getting lots of activity here uh, we've been at the haunted house I haven't had a chance to talk to you there but I will be there pretty soon but anyway I want to thank everybody who's joined me here I think you're back in school I've lost track of it Jack and I'm glad to say that's a good thing anyway uh, we're gonna have a whole bunch of little short things here but I'm gonna step back one more time so you can see these ruins and as I'm talking, you can see once again a point four. Hopefully, you can see that on the on the screen. Um, that's like I said. The ghost shows they get excited when there's like even a point two or three. We were getting two point nines, threes. We even got a six point five. This whole area. I'm gonna step back again. This whole area was once just all just a bunch of big Anastasia communities, what they call pueblos. The people lived together, kind of like what the hippies did. Lived in big. Uh, communes together, shared chores, made pottery. We found all sorts of battery uh, pottery charts here today. Um, just all kinds of exciting stuff. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. We're going to be going to a real interesting uh, pectoglyph later on today. And my good buddy Tom Powell, who's here on the trip, also is going to come with me. He's going to talk to you too. We think we found a pectoglyph that depicts a Bigfoot, a couple of Bigfoots, a couple of people, and even a big footprint cut into the rock. It's pretty exciting. We were excited when we found this thing. So we're going to get back to you as soon as we can. So all I got to say is do your homework, Jack, and stay out of trouble. And I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, Jack. This is Professor Oz coming to you from the haunted house in Taos, New Mexico. Can you dig it? Even though we've been here for a few days, this is the first time I've talked to you because it's been crazy. We've had all kinds of stuff going on here at night when uh, my friend Tom and I first came here. Real strange smells in certain parts of the house that have disappeared. The last two nights we've had loud banging on the walls, stuff falling over. It's been a trip. Uh, last night uh, I've been pretty good because I've been here. This is my second time after my first experience with the ghost. And I've kind of put up a barrier and tried to be tough. In other words, facing my own demons. And because of that, everything's gone pretty good. But last night I got the heebie-jeebies. And my little dog, Callie, who you see popping in and out of the picture sometimes, she was growling all night. It was really hard to get any sleep. It was wild. We've been all over the place already. You're going to see a lot of stuff come around uh, through this show on this segment of Taos, New Mexico, Haunted Paranormal House. Um, it's been a blast so far. It's been really cold weather here, about in the low 30s. In the daytime, we had snow the first day. That's kind of put off our, our shooting. We went to some Anasazi ruins yesterday. Got all kinds of um, readings on the millimeter, which I've talked about before, and I'll talk about some more. It's a thing that measures spiritual energy. In fact, everywhere we take the millimeter in this area, it's just nothing but numbers most of the time. And that's because this area has been lived in for so many years. In fact, the property I'm on right now has got petroglyphs from the Anasazi, which obviously they came about 3,000 years ago, mysteriously disappeared about 1,300, all kinds of theories about that. Um, but the place is just full of energy. Uh, it's been lived in a long, long time with lots of kind of people here. This house has a well underneath it, a spring, which creates even more spiritual energy. It's just been a riot here. Uh, has it been fun? Yes. Has it been scary? Absolutely. Uh, anyway, we're going to be heading out to some, uh, some, uh, some more uh, Anasazi uh, petroglyphs today, which actually we think might depict a uh, possible Bigfoot. And uh, you'll see that in this segment and also as a separate segment. So anyway... Get back to work, study your homework, and don't give your teacher any boop. Bye. Hey, Jack. Professor Oz here in Taos, New Mexico, uh, in an undisclosed location with a fascinating piece of Anasazi artwork, as they call it, petroglyphs. As you can see, I'm going to back off a little bit. You can see 
what looks like two large beings and two smaller ones along with a big footprint chiseled into the rock. Now, my friend Tom Powell and myself believe that it possibly could be depictions of Bigfoot, which have been seen in this area before. And if you go along with the fact that the Anasazi might have possibly had UFO connections, then this makes, and along with Bigfoot, then this even makes more sense because we have two Bigfoot here and two people, and this is not erosion in the rock. And what's so fascinating about this find right here is that you will find uh, artwork by the Anasazi and other ancient Indians that actually shows a large footprint, but never a footprint with two large beings next to two smaller people. So that's what makes this really, really fascinating, Jack. Um, I brought my mail meter last night. We were getting readings in the 0 .6, 0 .7. My friend Laura actually on the way over was getting 4.9s and, and 2s and, and 3s. But it's dropped down. She seems to have a little bit of a better spirit about her to get those kind of numbers. And Tom and I don't. But anyway, I just told him to say we're also actually getting spiritual activity, quite a bit of it in this area as we're walking around. So anyway, Jack, that's what this is all about. I think it's pretty cool. It kind of backs up some of our theories that possibly the Anasazi had UFO connections, as well as the fact that there have been Bigfoot in this area and they still may be frequenting this area. Anyway, for the bulk of my uh, time here, I'm going to turn over to my good friend Tom Powell, an author who's got three books out and a very much a specialist on this area. So I'm going to turn it over to Tom. So come on over, Tom. Hello. Thanks, Dave. Uh, here we are, as Dave said, in the heart of Anasazi country outside Taos, New Mexico, uh, former home of the Anasazi people. Uh, throughout their range, the Anasazi left these petroglyphs in the rocks, and it's given to us to sort of interpret them. Uh, one of the fun things about the uh, petroglyphs is we don't have access to the uh, person who made them, so it's completely open to interpretation. We really no one knows for sure what the Anasazi were trying to represent, what this particular artist had on his mind when this was created. Uh, but what we can do is compare it to other uh, petroglyphs in other places. Uh, I wrote about a location in Nevada called uh, Valley of Fire State Park. And the interesting thing about Valley of Fire State Park is they actually attempt to uh, interpret some of these uh, motifs. Uh, and what you see here is a similar uh, petroglyph from Valley of Fire showing two smaller people holding hands with two larger people. And then elsewhere in the Valley of Fire State Park, there's a sign that explains what may be uh, represented here. And the, this pictograph is called the family. And what it shows is two larger beings and two smaller beings. Uh, so some people see this as a family group, but if you ascribe to the idea that the Anasazi were representing uh, supernatural and spiritual entities in these petroglyphs, then maybe it opens the possibility that it's something else here. What you also see is these two beings don't have any heads, and it is said by some that that is the way the Anasazi represented entities that didn't want to uh, have their identity fully disclosed, wanted to remain anonymous, so they leave the heads off. But what you see here is two bigger beings and two smaller beings, which we think is the same thing that's represented here. Bigger being, bigger being, two smaller beings. And they are showing this proximity, which seems to show some sort of companionship, some sort of connection. Uh, interestingly, the other thing that you see in other uh, Anasazi pictographs elsewhere is they uh, like to show a foot. And uh, so here it is. Uh, here's an opportunity for us to come in and sort of interpret the pictograph based on our own point of view. So David and I, being Sasquatch folk, we come in here and, and we immediately see this foot and we see a representation of a Sasquatch. If you were a podiatrist, maybe you would see something else completely. But then we see these two large beings and the two small beings and as uh, David said, it, it could be interpreted as uh, them expressing their relationship to the um, other entities much bigger than themselves, i.e. the Sasquatch. Uh, the other thing that this petroglyph shows, which I've never seen anywhere else, is not just this uh, etching into what's called the desert varnish, this mineralized coating that you find on the rocks, but here they've actually penetrated into the rock faces really quite deeply. It's probably an inch deep right there, and here it's at least a half inch. That's a lot of work to chisel 
that uh, shape into the rock. And what we feel it shows is this expression of this large foot and then the large beings and the small beings. And so put it all together and one interpretation could be that they're expressing their partnership, their close connection to these larger beings, uh, which we interpret to be the Sasquatch. So fascinating here for that reason, but especially because you see something that you, you'd be hard pressed to find in any other uh, panel, which is what this is uh, called. And in this panel, you have this really deep footprint, a lot of effort, something really, really important is being expressed here in our view. So fun stuff. Uh, you can look at this and interpret it completely differently, but hey, that's what we see. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much, Tom, for being a very special guest on my show. Um, we're looking forward to putting this out as a separate entity on itself, as well as part of my Tao's uh, ghost house uh, experience. So all I got to say, guys, is keep it clean, do your homework, and don't give your teacher any boop. Hey, Jack, Professor Oz coming right back to you again. Check it out, Jack. The haunted house right there. That's it. Right now, today, it's... Uh, December 3rd, Saturday, and we're winding up our time here. Uh, I wish I could be like a lot of the ghost shows and actually have live footage for you, but that is so difficult because you basically have to be up all night. And let me tell you something, Jack, I'm not about to do that right now. But my stories are credible. I have no reason to lie. And um, we've had a couple quiet nights and a couple of wild nights. Last night was a very quiet night, which actually I was happy about because I finally got a good night's sleep. They really like to mess with you sometimes, but they didn't. What's been fascinating about Taos is that with our mail meter, everywhere we go, we get all kinds of readings everywhere. And that's because Taos has been around for, you know, what, 600 years? I know exactly the, the history of the place, but it's just been around for a long, 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 long time. So that's what's so exciting about this place is that there's spiritual activity everywhere. So anyway, um, I'm going to be going over to a real interesting rock on my friend's property here pretty soon. And I want to do a picture over there. It's a real cool picture of a guy. I think I actually might have posted it online. I'm not sure if I did yet. But it's a real interesting a stick figure of a man. He's got something sticking out of his head, Jack. And you know what? It almost looks like an antenna. Are you thinking about what I'm thinking? Well, that's true because I've said before on my show, the Anasazi, um, many people think they disappeared. They might have been, as they said on Star Trek, beam me up, Scotty. So anyway, we're going to go over there in a little bit and take a look at the, that thing. And we'll probably be winding up the show after that, but we've got a lot of great footage, and I'm just really looking forward to it. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. Um, you can't help but come to Taos and really like the place because there's so much history there. For those of us in California, and I know most of my viewers are probably Californians, because that's what this was designed for, but it's designed for everybody. You know, California is a pretty recent state, so we do have our ghost, we do have our Bigfoot, but this ancient history of people being around for thousands and thousands of years continuously, uh, we don't have that. And this property we're on right now, the house you're looking at originally has been around for 400 years. It's been a house, it's been a mill, and it's been a house again. So there's lots of energy here. Also on the property here, uh, when you get closer to the rocks, there's all kinds of readings on the EMF reader, which lets us know that there's spiritual activity here. So literally where I'm standing right here, people have been camping, living, and dying uh, at least since 3000 BC here. So we're talking about 5,000 years. So you know there's gotta be a lot of intensity here, a lot of spiritual power, and you feel it. Like I said, last night was a quiet night. The night before, there's all kinds of thumps and bumps, stuff falling over. It was a trip, Jack. So anyway, I'm going to sign off here, and we're going to do maybe one segment, maybe two, before we head back to California. But it's been a fascinating experience. I'm convinced more than ever that Anasazi had some type of connection, not only to Bigfoot, but also to um, UFOs. And it makes me sound like a wacko, then that's the way it is, Jack. So this is Professor Oz signing off and saying, you better do it right, and you better do it right again. Because if you don't do it right, you got it wrong. So adios. Hey Jack, this is Professor Oz here. I'm not sure if you could even see the artwork here. It's, I'm gonna to talk to you in the shadows and then get over on the sun. But um, what I'm looking at right here is a really cool 
uh, Anasazi pictograph of a man. You can see with the legs down here, the body, the arms, the neck and the head. But check that out, Jack. What does that look like? That looks like a freaking antenna, Jack. Okay, isn't that pretty cool? Now, the concept here is that possibly the Anasazi, as I've been talking along with my paranormal show here while well, I've been in Taos is that there is a UFO connection between Anasazi and we have a good example here now what the heck could that be huh you didn't see any Mohawks back then did you Jack that's right so anyway it's in the shadows I want to switch the Sun I don't know if it'll look better there because it's hard to see since I won't know until I get back home but anyway let's switch over here and I want to talk to you over here and kind of get out of the out of the shadow and here's the Sun now Hopefully you can see it any better. I'm not sure. I'll find out when I get home. But once again, it's amazing. This is on my friend's property, uh, etched into volcanic ash rock. And this is the best one on their property. There's some other ones right now. They're kind of covered with snow and dirt. But this one really caught my eye, so I really wanted to show all my, all my uh, viewers here that watch my show uh, this guy here. But what, once again, what's so fascinating is that little thing up there. Um, as I've been here this last week, uh, within paranormal areas, possibly some Bigfoot stuff, in the Anasazi and UFO connection. I'm convinced that the Anasazi were a very special tribe that disappeared mysteriously, and it's not an easy answer. I've bought a lot of books. I think we'll probably be coming back here again soon in three months to do further study and hopefully have another show. But this stuff is absolutely fascinating. And um, to think that life is so simple and that there's easy answers. Well, let me tell you something, Jack. It ain't true. Because the longer I live my life, the real I realize there's less answers I have. So hopefully everything's going good in your little world. You're staying out of trouble. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Don't give your teacher any bogus answers that you didn't do your homework and give him some big freaking lie. Do your job. Be a man or a woman. And keep it real for Professor Oz. So all I got to say is it's been fun here. This probably is going to be my last YouTube video before we leave to go back home. Maybe if something else pops up here before the end of the day, we'll get back to you. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you soon. So over and out, Jack. Well, Jack, the surprises keep on coming. Check this out. Look at this. A possible Bigfoot footprint, a man, a possible spaceship. We've got all kinds of stuff going on here, Jack. This is just kind of a wild back on the woods hunt, just looking for more petroglyphs. And I'm going to bring the camera even closer so you can check it out. That's pretty damn awesome, isn't it? Yes, it is. You saw it first at the Professor Oz show, under the radar, it's under like the radar. Airplane. And even here, we're looking at something that might even be an airplane. See that? Look at that. We don't know for sure, but it could be anything. And uh, yeah. Right below the skull. Right below the skull here, although I'm sure that's fairly recent. And skull bones, a pretty interesting spot. So anyway, Jack, we're checking out here. See you later. All right, Jack, I'm just holding it right here because my cell phone went out, but check this out. More, 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 more artwork. Look at these claws. Look at even up here. We're thinking it looks like maybe bear or possibly human hands. But look at this stuff. This thousands and thousands of years old. Pretty awesome. I'm going to add this to the podcast. I think it's really cool. Adios, amigos. Jack, what can I say? A trip to Taos? And back in the winter time, you saw the pictures, you saw the snow. It's all real. It's just absolutely amazing. And all I got to say, Jack, is don't ever eat raw oysters before a trip. Otherwise, you're going to get what I had, which is called C. Parvum. And it isn't any fun. I don't want to go into graphic detail, but if you go online, I did everything that it was. I was the poster child for C. Parvum, except I didn't blow any chunks, aka vomit. That was nice. Isn't that nice to know? TM. Ah, I. Anyway, um, there were ghosts of that house, banging on the walls, stuff moving around. Once again, since I wasn't feeling really, really good, I didn't do as much as I would like to done with cameras. But take my word for it, Jack, that house is haunted. Taos is haunted. There is just so much spiritual energy there, you can hardly imagine it. Uh, I hope to be going back there again in June with my friend Tom again. This is our friends Jim and Laura, and we'll do another episode there, and hopefully I'll be in better shape to uh, deal with the spirits, but all kinds of weird stuff, smells in the house. Uh, spirits do give off smells, nasty smells, and uh, it was all because of the fact, I think, that we were there. 
Anyway, I want to thank you once again for being tuned in to The Professor. And um, more adventures ahead. Could hardly wait. It's uh, moving on here, and we're going to be pretty soon looking at all the stuff to do uh, in the spring and summer of 2017. Wow, 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 wow. Anyway, all I got to say is I hope you passed your first semester, Jack. Hope you didn't cheat on your finals, but if you did, remember karma is a boop. So anyway, take care, keep it real for the professor, and I'll talk to you later.